Hello, my beautiful co-creators. Lilo here. I have another interview from Windsor. I'm doing so many interviews. I just cannot stop. I'm this this interview machine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's like you're on automatic. Hopefully not. No, no, no. Because every single experience, every single human being, add to this conversation. And and I've interviewed yesterday Jazz. Uh, well, the two days ago, Jazz, your your husband, your your partner, I should say. And I was very interested to hear um, and to talk with you, Jenny, because you. You do this vocal tai chi, which I had never heard of before. Tell us about it. How did this come through and what is it like? Well, it's um, I'm discovering it myself to some extent. It's very new. It's only been in the world for nine months. Um, and in a sense, um, it's um, like a present from the universe for me. And... Um, It's, it was named by my partner Jazz, in fact, when I was singing um, and moving and improvising and tuning in and um, just being in the moment with my voice. He said, wow, what, what you're doing, it, it looks like a kind of vocal Tai Chi. And um, in fact, he said that about three years ago um, and we just let it go. But the name always was just in the back of my mind. I went off, I did other things, I went back to university, I studied composition, I got my music master's degree, and then I finished my music master's degree um, in December last year, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do next. And you get to that sort of point where you go, hmm, what's happening? Where am I going? Mm. And I was at a party, it was just after Christmas, a couple of days after Christmas, And it was one of those parties where you could get up and do a turn, you know, do, do a little performance of some sort. And it was midnight and everyone wanted to go home, but I hadn't done anything. And someone said, well, you didn't do anything yet, Jenny. I said, oh, it's too late, it's too late. No, come on, do something. So I thought, I haven't done it, I haven't got anything prepared. I said, I'm going to do vocal Tai Chi. And, I, had, you know, the name came from three years before. I hadn't thought about it. Since then, I'd been doing music degrees, I'd been writing other music and things, but then it was there, and I just said, I'm going to do this. And I just started to improvise with my voice. But even just saying it, people were, oh, what's that? Mm -hmm. So then I just used my voice in the, the way that I've developed, and um, everyone was quite interested in it, <laughs> to say the least. Um, they, they were sort of coming up to me and saying it, gave them a strong experience, mm -hmm. feelings inside their body, like um, shivers and moving the energy in them and things. And it reminded a lot of people of different musical cultures. Mm -hmm. And there was so much positive feedback from this party. And it just came at that moment. I, mean, I don't know if your listeners know that you get to this sort of block and you just, you have to sort of let go. There's, there's no rational obvious next step and I was in that place I was just like oh, I'm 50 years old just gone back to university to do my degree to find my music again after coming to a previous place before university where I was just nothing seems to be working you know I'm talented I know that but still something's not coming through So the university was a kind of preparation in a way. It gave me a chance to go right back into the core of what is music. Because it was a very enlightened course that I went on at Brunel University in West London. And fantastic tutors, particularly one or two who I spoke to a long time, worked with in depth. And they just refreshed something in me. But nevertheless, when the course was over, it was over. And I still had to go into real life and make something happen. So this memory came back of what Jazz had said to me. When you're singing, it sounds and feels like a kind of vocal Tai Chi. And he teaches Qigong and he knows about these things and he had an experience. So yeah. I jumped in that moment. And did I that quantum leap? I did that quantum leap, actually. And, and since December, since January, I thought, okay, January came this year, and I thought, let me try and do a whole concert, not just five minutes in a, mm -hmm. at a party. I thought, okay, come on, you've got the skill, you can put this together, you know how to do a concert, but not when you just make it all up as you go along. So normally a concert, I have prepared music, I've been practicing, I've been rehearsing, um, but this was just like open. Talking of being in the moment. 
Yeah. I give myself the support of the pre-recorded backing tracks. So the first day I did it, I just asked the pianist who was sitting there, just play um, a G chord going up and down the piano without any major third. Just play open G. <clears throat> and it gave me a kind of a, an ambient world to enter into. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. So then I thought, well, if I can do that, I can create something a little bit more sophisticated and a backing track, and then I can just float into that. I can just mm. dive. And uh, so in January, before my concert, I created about five backing tracks. So I had some security. <laughs> <laughs> we need those as human beings. Yeah. I love it. I had my security blanket. <laughs> and then I thought, okay, I'm going to just invite my friends and family and a few um, associates and I did the concert um, and I sang for about um, an hour and a half without um, knowing what I was going to sing. And I had my five backing tracks, but I also did some unaccompanied as well, just the voice. The concert went down so well. People started saying, I want to do it. Yeah. Sorry, I got a tickle. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <coughs> I, I just get are you okay? From a, a head cold. Yeah, and, and so because uh, this morning you were also teaching people on how to do it. I haven't seen it, but... Uh. Yeah, well, um, what I haven't said yet is that I have also been practicing um, as a voice movement therapist. And I've been doing that work for 20 years. And that work has some very clear exercises and techniques to help anybody start to use their voice. Mm. So, in a way, vocal Tai Chi is a synthesis of, I'm standing on the shoulders, as they say, of many great teachers. Mm -hmm. The teachers that were involved in the work that's led to voice movement therapy. And the very first pioneer of the, the technique that comes from that was a man called Alfred Wolfson in the 1930s. So that technique has gone through many transformational different teachers and um, I take it on now, I'm standing on the shoulders of many of them. So that's one part. And then also my own Tai Chi practice, my own meditation, my own work in research into voice in different cultures. Um, for example, I've worked with flamenco musicians, mm. Indian classical musicians. I've been in Bali and I sang in the temple with the temple singers there, the women when they're singing in the funerals and things. And they said, come, come and join us. They taught me some songs. So I've had some very you know, rich um, uh, experiences, and as well as composing. I've written two operas. Um, I've written choral music, um, instrumental. And now you're in vocal Tai Chi? <coughs> so it goes on. <laughs> it's wonderful to see how uh, just all of a sudden uh, when we let things happen, there's just this magnificence of uh, it feels kind of like when you're doing it. It's, 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 it's all of the music, all of it together. I've heard it last night and it felt like it was this immediately you want to close your eyes and then and, and, and be in it in this space and live it and, and feel it. It's such a wonderful feeling of just opening our wings and, and allowing ourselves to live in that present moment and reminding ourselves of all this sacredness and, uh, and that the divine is, is present here and now. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you very much for this experience and I look forward to see how all of this unfolds uh, for you. And uh, I know you have some videos on YouTube that if you're curious to, to hear what it sounds like, uh, what is your YouTube channel? Um, well, you can go to my, my personal website, vocaltaichi.com and there's um, a video on that site. Perfect. Otherwise, just search my name on YouTube and there's extra stuff there. Uh -huh. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for this experience and thank you for, I hope your, your voice uh -huh. gets back. It's a bit ironic, isn't it? Yeah. Got up at the crack of dawn to do a workshop at half past seven this morning. Yeah. No, but I have just got a little passing yeah. tick, tickle, so yeah. apologies. <laughs> tickle, tickles. Okay, well, much, much love, my delicious co-creators. Hope you have enjoyed this, this, uh, this interview, this conversation, this, uh, it's wonderful to, I'm, I feel, I'm so, um, touched and inspired by uh, by everybody here and how uh, we're so unique in, in bringing forth all of us such a such a, something beautiful to to the world when we step out in our uniqueness 
So thank you for being you. Um, <laughs> thank you for, for interviewing me. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. Thank you. Much, much love, my delicious co-creators. Bye-bye.